the Gilda's maximum lawyers community of legal entrepreneurs who are taking their businesses and lives to the next level. As a Guild member, you'll build relationships, be held accountable, and learn strategies specifically designed to get you unstuck and accelerate your plan for growth. Members are also granted exclusive access to masterminds hosted around the country. Our next event is coming up, and we're heading to Scottsdale, Arizona. There's something truly magical about the power of these in-person connections where real-time breakthroughs happen. Picture this. You're surrounded by like-minded law firm owners tackling your business and mindset challenges together. The energy is electric, the insights are transformative, and the results are game-changing. Investing in yourself is the best decision you'll ever make. The knowledge, strategies, and breakthroughs you'll gain are priceless assets that will supercharge your practice and propel you forward. Join the Guild and secure your ticket to Scottsdale at the best possible price by visiting maxlawevents.com. Oh, Tyson, I have a fun show in store for all of our listeners today. Even you will be surprised by the topic at hand. I haven't even told you what it is. We're going to do this live without a net. So are you ready? Okay. Not really, but yeah, let's do it. Run your law firm the right way. The right way. This is the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. Maximum Lawyer Podcast. Your hosts, Jim Hacking and Tyson Mutrix. Let's partner up and maximize your firm. Welcome to the show. So Maximum Lawyers, Tyson and I wanted to hop on real quick and give you an intro to this new concept we have going called Maximum Lawyer Rewind. There we go, Maximum Lawyer Rewind. This is a brilliant idea from our very own Becca Eberhardt and Tyson. They, they've come up with a lot of good ideas and one of them is that we wanna bring you some of our best episodes, some of our favorite episodes and I haven't um, seen the list of what those episodes are, but I sure want to make sure that Law Firm Roulette is on the list because that's one of my all-time favorite episodes. Jim has not seen the list because he's not completed his portion of it, but I, I, the first one I pegged was the, the Roulette, so uh, Website Roulette. It was the very first one that I picked, and I picked a few other ones, and there's some really, really good ones in there that I had completely forgotten about it. And Jim, so you need to finish the list and so that people can, can listen to the rest of our top 10 Maximum Lawyer Rewind episodes. All right, I'll do it. All right, enjoy everybody. You're back on the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. I'm Jim Hacking. And I'm Tyson Mutrix. What's going on, Jimmy? All right, so I, as you know, am a big fan of I Love Marketing. It's one of my favorite podcasts. I listen to it religiously. I've listened to most of the episodes twice, although I will say I've sort of drifted off it lately because it's become more the Genius Network Joe Polish show. But I still get a lot of value out of it, and a lot of the old episodes are really helpful. My favorite episode, and I think one of their most popular episodes, is an episode called Yellow Pages Roulette. Did you ever hear that one? Yeah, it was great. Yeah, so for the listeners who don't know about Yellow Pages Roulette, what they do is they, whenever the new Yellow Pages arrives at Dean's house, he brings it in and Joe yells out a page number and they find an occupation and they start riffing on what they think the person should do from a marketing standpoint. And what I thought we could do is you could pick a city and I could pick a practice area and we could run the search on the Google, see what comes up, and then we could give our thought on the firm's website. What do you think? Nice. I like it. That's good. That's a good one. Let's do it. So pick a city. I'm going to pick Sacramento. Sacramento, California. Okay. I'll pick a practice area. So I will pick um, bankruptcy. So type in Sacramento, California, bankruptcy. And we'll see what comes up. Do it. Yep. All right. So on the little three... A little three pack for Google. I have Adam Garcia, Fraley and Fraley, and Sacramento Bankruptcy Center. I have no. I have Fraley and Fraley, Sacramento Bankruptcy Attorneys, Attorney Debt Reset, and then Moy Che, Bankruptcy Attorney. Isn't that funny that we both got two different things? Yeah. We'll have to ask Seth Price about that sometime. Why that is? Well, Fraley and Fraley, they have five stars. So maybe we'll start with them second. Look up something called the Sacramento Bankruptcy Center and see if you can find their website. I like the official sounding name of that one. Sacramento Bankruptcy Center. Okay, got it. There's no stars. All right, so do you see this website? I do. It looks like it's from the 90s. Yeah, it's very dated, huh? And yeah. um, for those who want to join in the fun, 
The website is www.sacramentobankruptcy.com. Now, that's a pretty good URL, I would say. Yeah, it's a great domain name. That's for sure. So I will tell you, the first thing that I see is there is no lead magnet. There's no really easy way for me to contact the attorney if I want to contact them. There's a contact button at the top right. But Let's click on that and see what happens. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, man. So oh, you see that gosh. picture right there? I don't know what it's a picture of. <laughs> um, but back in the day when I was at Tonkin and Mondel doing maritime work, <laughs> we hired this guy to design our website. So my partners were, I would say, as lawyers, they were rather conservative. You know, we did insurance defense, and, and I love those guys, but they were they were not big risk takers when it came to marketing. And this guy came in, I remember he had long curly hair and an earring. This was back in the days. This is what our website looked like back in 2006, what this page looked uh, like to me. And we had a stretch picture of the river. That was a, like we Jim Mondel and I went down. <laughs> Jim Mondel and I went down with our little ten pixel cameras, and we thought Dude, they are the greatest things ever. And the guy had to stretch it out to fit on the web page in order to make it fit. And that's what this web page looks like. So you can't even submit your information. It, it lists the address, the phone number, the fax, and the email. It does not even give you an opportunity to submit a question or your, just your name and your email, nothing. There's, so there's no way for this attorney to capture leads, which is which is really insane. It's copyright. I'm going back to the homepage, Tyson. I'm back to, it says copyright 2013, but man, it really looks like it's from, from years ago. And obviously we're not trying to make fun of anybody, but I really think that, I mean, obviously she's spending a little bit of money to get on the first three pack of Google. So it's probably based on the history of the domain name, but I think this thing, really needs an update. Well, I will tell you this. I do like about it, to be honest with you. There's a section like right in the middle of the page uh, with easy to, to follow links. It says mission statement. I think maybe that it, that's mislabeled. But it says mission statement. It says, well, you know, what the mission statement is. But the reason why I say it's mislabeled is below it are some really important links for people. Uh, but Tyson, Tyson, wait. Yes. Put your, put your mouse on the links. They're not links. They're just, they look like links. Oh no! Oh my gosh! No, you can't even see. It. That's crazy. <laughs> it makes me furious right now because I, I was going to tell you like, these are really. It's really easy to follow links, and then we, when you go to do it, there's nothing there. Okay, yeah, well, that, I was about to give are, her a compliment, and I got to take it. I got to take it back now. Those would all be things that would interest people. Oh, so there is when you click on the an Espanol button, it does take you to a Spanish version of it, but. Yeah, this is not very dynamic. It doesn't look like it's been updated anytime soon. You know, it, it also has a lot of the classic lawyer things, you know, since 1992 and experience and quality. And we handle Chapter 7, Chapter 11, Chapter 13. And then there's there's about 10 FAQs. So I'm not real sure what's going on here. Um, I think there's not any kind of blog or updated, you know, latest news. I'm sure that the bankruptcy rules have changed and that there have been cases that would affect people. Well, yeah, and I'll tell you this, something that we talked about before is consistency. So you're, you've got Sacramento bankruptcy attorney. And then when you get to down below, there's uh, bankruptcy FAQs and real estate FAQs. And I really thought that they may be related. They, they kind of are, but they're not. This isn't about bankruptcy. The, the question's on the right. It's about real estate and foreclosure stuff. And... I, it, there's really no consistency if 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 if, it, if that portion is related to bankruptcy, which it isn't. But if it were, then it should she needs to be in the bankruptcy FAQ section. So it just it's kind of confusing to me. You know, yeah. is this a bankruptcy website? Is this a real estate website? Um, it really is bizarre how it's how it's being done. Another thing I wanted to say was, you said dynamic. Um, that's actually a, an industry term, and I want to make sure people know what that is. There's static websites like this website, and then there are dynamic websites, which are very versatile type websites. There, uh, and you and I are no experts in this. Um, Seth, Seth Price definitely is, but you want to make sure your website is a dynamic website. It can be used on a mobile phone, a tablet, a PC, a Mac, whatever it is, any browser. This one is not a guarantee. If we went to it on our cell phones, it, it would it would just be a, a regular website. It wouldn't be a mobile version. I'm going to do that right now. And while we're talking, let's so let's shift gears a little bit. We've we sort of 
beaten up this website pretty badly. And so if you were going to sit down, if Diana J. Kavanaugh, attorney at law, was your cousin and she asked you to come in and sort of help her tweak the website, I, I have some ideas, but I think your lead magnet, like what would be a good lead magnet and what, you know, I think she's on the right track with the content. What would be your steps? The first thing is, is she doesn't make content. I mean, honestly, Jimmy, well, maybe I would. I'm trying to think of how I would start with this because there's just no content. I, maybe I would start with the lead magnet and maybe go with something like the five things you need to look for when before you file for your bankruptcy or the five things you need to do before filing for your bankruptcy or the five biggest bankruptcy mistakes, something like that where you create that lead magnet and and get someone to – and you're actually going to capture their information as they come to your website and, and download that report. The other thing is, is there's just no content on this website. So she could add a blog section where she could routinely add some content to it on a weekly basis. The other thing is, is that just she's got the FAQ section, but that's all there is. There's not – if I wanted to learn a lot more about bankruptcy, I wouldn't be able to, not from this website. Yeah, and I think that your lead magnet is a good one. And I think that she's identified the pain points that people have. People are worried about foreclosure or repossession. People are worried about phone calls all the time. People are worried about wage garnishment or IRS collection. So I think each of those things would be sort of an avenue for her to create content. If she could sort of track the language that her clients use when they come to see her to talk about each of these issues, I think that she really would have the opportunity to build out good content that way, don't you think? Yeah, for sure. And what's interesting to me is that she has the topics. So, for example, stop foreclosure and repossession, stop phone calls, stop wage garnishment, stop IRS collection, eliminate credit cards, eliminate medical bills, all this stuff. She can go in there on each one of those and answer a ton of questions on how she does it or how it's done, what's the process, how long will it take. There's just a lot of stuff that she can answer within each one of those topics that she has listed. And in the questions that she has, she has a short question and a short answer. She could, so the first part is, does does filing a bankruptcy get me out of debt permanently? And she just says for most debts, yes, you'll never have to pay bank discharge debts unless you want to. There's a bunch of other questions that she could follow up with, with that one question to build a lot of content for the website. Yeah, and over in this other column with what are stated as real estate FAQs, I don't think most people are going to think about these as real estate FAQs. But the first question, my foreclosure is tomorrow. Is it too late to stop it by filing a bankruptcy? So, you know, Dean Jackson, when I was on his show, he talked to me about, you know, insider information. And she answers that it might not be too late. Now, I'm an attorney, and I didn't know that you could maybe stop your foreclosure, which is going to happen in 24 hours by filing a bankruptcy. So, that surprises me. And that's sort of like key information that people, especially in an extreme situation, the kind of people who might type that very question would love to have that information. So I think, you know, building that out and and knocking that out as a, as a content piece would really be helpful. Yeah. And with that topic, there could be a really juicy subject line, something like stop your foreclosure in less than 24 hours, or there could be something like that where, where, to let people know that that's what it's about. And it could be a blog post or a website page and they're going to be searching for it. So that's going to be the page that comes up and then they can have a, a lead magnet in some way or call us immediately at this emergency phone number to stop your foreclosure now, something like that where they have they know that, hey, this is the issue and you're the right person for this and you can actually maybe stop this foreclosure. Yeah, that's the lead magnet. Stop your foreclosure today, exclamation point. I mean, that would be something that people would find very compelling. I think you build out its own domain. You link to it off your website. You get a lead pages account and you set up the special report. People download it and then they go into your funnel. Because obviously, if people are interested in stopping their foreclosure tomorrow, they're sure as hell going to be interested in talking to a bankruptcy attorney. Yeah. And the other thing, just we didn't talk about this really, but you made me think about whenever we were, you were just talking is, there's only one call to action. It's just the phone number at the very top. And I think yeah. there needs to be more more calls to action. I'm looking at her. So I've never seen this before in my entire life. I'm looking at it on my iPhone. And I suggest you do it too. Because not only is it static on the phone, 
the entire page is on my phone. It's, it's I've <laughs> never, never seen anything in. like it. Yeah, it's not even zooming in. It's just like the whole page is on my phone. I, I can't believe it. I've never seen anything like this. All right, All right well, um, we don't want to beat up yeah. too too much on the Sacramento Bankruptcy Center, but I do think there's some lessons here for our listeners that they might get value out of this. I think we should, while you're looking that up, I think we should scroll back and do one more. And I think we should go look at the other one that came up pretty prominently, which is Fraley and Fraley. They have 11 five-star reviews and they came up second and they, they came up on both of our three packs on the Google. All right. So I'm going to click on their website. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wait, wait a minute, Beavis. Oh, my. <laughs> Whoa. This one might Whoa. be better. <laughs> See, I, wow. Sacramento so gold mine. Jeez. Seth Price on the line, emergency, calling Seth yeah. Price. Seth, we found some clients for you. No, oh, my God. Here's the thing. Here, I'm going to do the, hold on. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to do this one really quick. St. Louis bankruptcy attorney. I don't I'm know if we're going to. I don't know if we're going to be able to put this episode on the air, Tyson. <laughs> I don't, uh, okay, I don't know what this is. I don't know if it's an industry thing. I'm looking up at St. Louis ones. What? Which one? Well, here we you? go. This is there's a good one. I'm gonna give a props. I'm gonna give props to somebody. All right, Sacramento, Fraley and Fraley. It's got a big uh, guy with a big old was it ten gallon uh, cowboy hat? Is that what they call? <laughs> yep. But even better than that, so we are at www.sacramentobankruptcyattorneys.com. Again, a pretty good domain name. I think some of the people with the oldest domain names, at least in Sacramento, seem to have frozen <laughs> their websites back when they got their domain name. Yep. Oh, my. First of all, okay, so he has these squares. Oh, there's actually links to them. So these are all links. So he's a link to the state California State of California Board of Legal Specialization, his AVO 10.0 rule, um, rating, which is good. He has Yelp and NACA and National Association of Consumer Bankruptcy Attorneys, all these buttons at the top, a AAA or an A rating from the Better Business Bureau. I don't know why you want to have these at the top of your website because, oh, okay, well, when you click on them, it doesn't take you, oh, interesting. So if you click on these buttons, I thought it was going to take them off the website, but at least it doesn't do that. It takes them to a special page called Certifications where he walks through what each of these ratings mean. That's actually pretty good. I like that. You, I do too. Yeah. I was going to say it's really cool because it says, what, I'm going to scroll down, what is the Better Business Bureau logo and why is it important to me? And this is most people have yeah. heard of the Better Business Bureau, but have never used it. So I, it's really cool. Uh, I think yeah, that's I like that. Cool. I mean, the fonts themselves, the images are all stretched and way too distorted to really look clean, but it's not a bad play. It's not a bad move to you know, explain what all these things mean. I think a lot of lawyers just like to put, I know I have this on my website. I have images of things, certifications and things, websites that I've been on and things. So I think this is actually pretty good. You know, and you haven't seen this yet, I'm, I'm sure, because you probably have not gone all the way down to the bottom of the page. But there's a really cool button, which I'm going to look into now. It's called, it says rate us on Google. And you click on it, oh. it takes you straight to the reviews where you can then rate him and his services. I always try to get that, but I can't. I can only get it to the page before, not to where you actually write the review. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can send people to the Google search where I'm over on the right, and I tell them to click on the right review button if they're willing. You know. But well, this, this one good. actually opens. If you click on it, it actually gets you to the actual reviews. Straight um, to the reviews. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. And We're I'll say how you do that, by the way. This is a good take. Okay. I, I know how you do it because my links when I send to people, it, it gives them this view. You actually have to click on the reviews and start reading them, and you just copy the link. That's all you do. Very simple. So whenever you're actually on your reviews, you click all the way through to this where you're, you've got a screen just like this. Just copy the link. That's all you got to do. Oh, all right, cool. All right, now he does have – let's go back to his home page. Okay. He has this – what do you call this? This bar on the top that sort of asks different questions? Yeah, it's a slider. Slider. I've never seen one that that sort of dated and old. Um, it looks really old, don't you think? Yeah, I, it's interesting to me because I think maybe this is just a really old theme. It may be a WordPress. I can't really tell. I think it might be though. It looks like it might be a right. WordPress theme, and I think it's just an old theme that probably has never been updated. 
Now, Gary has a YouTube video right underneath that, so I'm going to check it out. Can you hear it at all? Yep, definitely got a so, green screen behind him. Yeah, this is Gary in front of a green screen of the bankruptcy court, it looks like. I do like the cowboy hat. It's sort of right up there with your buddy from Brown and Brown. I'm sure people in Sacramento know Gary Fraley for his bankruptcy and his big 10-gallon hat. Yeah, it reminds me of the guy that's on Shark Tank every once in a while that wears the same shirt, and he talks about that on one podcast I listen to. That's really cool. Because people, he says he'll he'll never stand out about anything else. You know, everyone everyone's smart, everyone's competitive, but he wears the exact same shirt, and he found it in an airport. He was on his way to a job interview or something like that. Whenever he thought of doing this, and he he found the shirt in an airport and and said, oh, that stands out, and then wore that instead of wearing a suit and ended up getting the job. And he's always done since, but. It's the same thing with this guy. He he wears the hat, and he he stands out. There's something about this, right? So it's 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 done up with the the green screen and everything else. I don't like that, just because he's got this fake going in the background. But what I do like is he's sort of he's sort of raw. There's something I like about him. Yeah. He's kind of raw. Yeah. He's not too done. Too done. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Well, you always laugh about my videos that are a little bit off. So I think you're right. I think people, you know, I shot a video. A, like a lawyerly video talking about the Trump executive order, you know, like with my suit on and everything. And that got some views, but I did one on my back porch last week and we're up to like 2000 views. So I think that authenticity goes a long way. I mean, I think he, there's sort of a fine line, but he does sort of stand out. I mean, in the text, it says Gary Fraley is no three piece suit attorney. However, make no mistake. He knows how to help you in ways almost no other attorney can. I mean, that's I like that. And he has a testimonials link. I'm going to click on that. So that goes on and on and on. So, and he he's the one that had the five star reviews on Google and everything. I think he's he's got it going on. I, I sort of like it. Okay, so this is a good example of how a terrible looking website can still do really well for you because he has all yeah. the other bones there. So he has a lot of stuff. He doesn't have a lead magnet. He does have calls to action, which are nice. I mean, he's got some other things that are nice that, that people will remember him for. But he answers people's questions. He provides a lot of information. Um, there's the bankruptcy bill of rights, which I think is interesting. You can submit the information, but the, my, my suggestion would be for him is where you submit your contact information, you bump that to the top because it does a bottom page. Or he does the a different side. bankruptcy. So, yes, yeah, so I would be good. He does the different bankruptcy types and what he answers a bunch of questions, the benefit. I mean, which is really good. And the font is really easy to read. It's a bigger font, which I do like. He's got this FAQs and tools where you can actually yeah. I'm there's a on credit right budgeting now. calculator. Yeah, I mean, this is all helpful information where if I was going to file a bankruptcy, he lists, what, 20 calculators on here? Yeah, and he has about 15 videos, FAQs, and he has all of his Alvo FAQs. Uh, on here. So that's pretty good. Yeah. And hey, these are his own, this is his own calculator. He he created this. This is actually their own coding because it, it sends you to a link on their website where you actually type in all the information and it will allow you to create a computer printer friendly report. This is pretty good. I will say this is, it's all dated and it's, it's ugly looking, right. but ugly can be good sometimes. The calculator and things like it are probably things he has in his office that he uses anyway. So to put it out on the web and let people use it, I mean, I think this is an example of just putting out all your best stuff and people will see your expertise through the, your willingness to just give away your best stuff. I, I've really come to the point where I just have no qualms about giving away my best stuff content wise and then sort of letting the chips fall where they may. You're absolutely right, and I think this is so funny because we have so many tools around our offices. This is a good a good example of that where you have, you can actually put this content out. You're already using it. I, I can already tell you one I have. I've got this it's a funky name, but distribution computation worksheet is what I called it. And it's partly a joke because it sounds so funny. But in Missouri, we have the Missouri Lean Statute, which allows us to actually reduce the provider liens proportionate to however many bills they have. And so you basically, how we divide that is we first take out the attorney's fees and expenses, and then you the providers are entitled to 50% of that, and then we divvy it up based upon the provider's bills. Well, 
it know it sounds complicated because it can be. So I created the spreadsheet and I could, this is something I could easily put out there for people and I just have it. So yeah. um, now I'm going to do that. Now it's easy because he does this from an Excel spreadsheet. I can tell just by the tables and everything. And you can just, all you have to do is I bet there was a theme that he could use. It's not a widget. What's the other one that used uh, WordPress? What's the name of it? I can't think of it, but he could do that, and I bet he just uploaded his spreadsheet, and it made a lot of this stuff for him, which was a really easy way of doing things. This is a well, really, I think this is a really, a really helpful website. Yeah, I'm gonna give thumbs up to old Fraley and Fraley. I can see why they've gotten the five reviews, and he's taking the time to get his clients to give him a shout out on the web. And so I think I, I like this website a lot. Listen, yeah, you were all judgmental, this guy, and it's 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 a pretty good website. Uh, I believe yep. it good. Yep. All right, well, let's All right, do, uh, so, do your hack of the week. All right, for my hack of the week, I'm going to use something that I'm using very frequently these days. And in fact, I'm using it right now, and that is from Google Hangouts, you can make a call. And I've really gotten used to making my calls over the internet. Obviously, we use VoIP here in the office, but just in general, Google's letting me record this very phone call through or make this very phone call through their Google Hangout phone app. So I, I highly recommend it. I use it a lot. Interesting. I had no idea that you were on Google Voice. That's that's good. The I think there may be this perception, at least I had I have a perception that's kind of poor quality and things like that, but it sounds like it's not. So cool. Shout out to Google. All right. Well, I am for my tip of the week, I'm going to talk about the book Tribes. I tried to uh, talk about this in the one episode that we had to scrap because the audio was bad, but Tribes is a really good book and it's really it's Seth Godin, he talks about people are, are really looking for a leader, and, and there's plenty of opportunities for you to step up and lead, and uh, there, there's people like that are listeners like Joey Vitale. He's created a community of, of Etsy store owners, and he's doing a really good job of that. And I don't know if he's read that book, but there's a really good way of building these communities, and these communities will then be feeders for you um, in different areas of your life, whether it's to get clients or whatever it might be. But there are, that's not the purpose of it. The purpose of it is just to have this community and, and actually being a part of something and see, seeing something grow. So you can, there are maybe parts of your, for example, you, Jimmy, um, you've got this, uh, the whole President Trump thing where there's a lot of immigration that is being stopped. And so you've You've done a really good job of building this community. You're asked to speak today. People are following you. And, and the, the thing is, we just have to step out there and lead. And you're doing that. And so people have to realize that all you have to do is, is just put your neck out there and people will follow. You should have to, you got to do the first steps. So that's my book, so, The Tribes. Yeah. I'm not one for hyperbole, but it is an honest statement for me to say that I don't think there would be a hacking law practice if I hadn't read Tribes. It was the very, very, very first book that I ever read that opened my eyes to all of the kinds of things that we talk about. And it had a deep effect on me. I've read it twice. It's a very short book, but the main point in there that I really got out of it that really sort of freed me up was the idea that you can't make everybody happy. And that if you want to lead a tribe, you have to be willing to have people that don't like you and have people that don't want to be in your club. And that makes the people that are in your club love you that much more. So it's a great little book. I think every attorney needs to build a tribe and, and needs to be willing to say who their tribe is for and who their tribe is not for. So as always, Uncle Seth, I'm bringing it 100%. So it's a, it's a great book. Cool. All right, man. Well, uh, let's wrap it up. Later, bro. We'll talk to you next week. All right, man. See ya. Thanks for listening to the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. The Maximum Lawyer Podcast. To stay in contact with your host and to access more content, more content. go to MaximumLawyer.com. Maximum Have a great week and catch you next time.